Inspired by a Japanese comic character, Modern Toilet mixes bathroom humor with gourmet Taiwanese cuisine. Oh, this is the waiting area? Yes. You can wait on a toilet seat. So when a customer walks in here for the first time, what's their reaction? They feel shocked. So shocked. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm sitting on a toilet seat, about to eat over a sink, urinals on the wall, a shower curtain, showers. It's yeah. weird. Very, very weird. On the menu, there's traditional Taiwanese food and Western dishes, like seafood pasta and breaded pork chops. And what's the most popular dish? Chia chicken. Oh, spicy. A little spicy, but it will feel refreshed. Well, that's perfect. If it gets too spicy, I don't have far to go. That's oh, right. Served that's hot burn. and steaming to your table. Only Bob Bloomer, I'm telling you. His new show, World's Weirdest <laughs> Restaurants. Uh, amazing stuff. Bob, how are you? Very well, thank you. Nice so, to be back. I was going to ask you if eating out of a toilet is weird, but you let us eat out yeah. of the toilet, and it's weird. It, oh, really? I don't find it really all that weird at all. <laughs> I got to do it again. This you is actually one of the toilets at Modern Toilet, from Modern Toilet. Um, how did you find, I mean, I, there's probably no shortage of, of fodder for you to do right, this show. we got to get the side angle, too, but, just um, so you How see. did you find these restaurants where you went to? Because you found so many weird places. Well, we did, you know, we shot 13 episodes. Every episode has four restaurants in it. Each one's like a five-minute doc about mm -hmm. that restaurant. So that's 52 restaurants around the world. Some of them we knew about from our travels uh, on Glutton for Punishment, because yeah. we sort of circumvented the globe several times. Um, some of them we'd heard about, some of them our researchers found and Well, people like that. must tell you, I mean, when you land in a region, I'm sure people are eager to tell you about all the strange, weird, quirky, cool, you know, whatever places to True go. True that, but um, as you know from television, you can't exactly land in a region and then start shooting stuff. Like, no. we, yeah. we <laughs> you gotta have a plan. But, but here's what was kind of interesting, was that people were telling us about weird restaurants all the time. We'd tell them the concept of the show and they'd say, oh, I know this place that's really weird. They bring meat to your table on a skewer and they carve it. And we go, and that's, that's not, not weird, weird enough. enough. <laughs> That's, that's so weird. weird. You do not understand so weird. Why is it there were, and I'm, I've, I've been occasionally asked if the, any of the restaurants were too weird for us, but the answer is we were really always on patrol to find the weirdest. Yeah. And, and what we found were too many restaurants that weren't weird enough. Mm -hmm. Did you come up with a weird ranking system? Like, are there top ones that you were just like, because we've seen a, a bunch of them. We saw the first couple episodes. Obviously, Modern Toilet, kind of weird. Everything's toilet. Yeah, uh, well, that's about, that is, that, restaurant sort of sums it all up for us. Like yeah. that is just a perfect. Now what's yeah. surprising is that the food is good at a lot of these really weird places. It is. That did that was surprise amazing. you that it was delicious food with all these gimmicks everywhere? Yes, it definitely did. Some of the restaurants, the food needed the help of the environment. Others, um, for example, we did one here. It was called No Fixed Address, um, which is normally this restaurant that happens in a hidden location. Mm -hmm. But on the night that we shot, it was uh, speed dating evening. So people would, uh, the diners were sent uh, a menu in advance. They would select what they wanted to order for each course, and right. then they'd be paired up with another diner who had similar taste. That's interesting. And they had one dish on, on the menu, which was rabbit. I thought, well, that's really interesting. If you're speed dating or blind dating, that's a good thing to know about the other Yeah, person. do you like Le Pan or, yeah. or are you that, not? That says a lot, not only just the specific you know, flavor of yeah. rabbit, do you like that, but it says a lot about a person's I think well, so. well, you get into all kinds of, I mean, because I'm thinking, you know, as soon as I watch the show, I'm like, health board in Canada or in Vancouver or regional health board, like, there's no way they'd let some of these things go. You were served by Monkeys I was served by an actual macaque monkey in uh, in a little rural izakaya about two hours north of Tokyo. Now, what was this like being served by monkey? Because we're not joking. Oh, it was uh, the, the best monkeys... thing in the whole oh, wide world. Oh, it would be so what? awesome. Yeah, I mean, just think about it. Beer and monkey. It doesn't get any better than the two of them together on one stage. Wow, but now, there's no way in North America this would fly. No, that's very true. We have different health standards, but how does it feel when you are served by a creature instead of a person? Do you, did you have fear about the food, or does it just so fine you forget about it? Uh, no, uh, you know, like another day in the office, I'm served by many creatures in restaurants around here, even in this town. Oh, that creeped scared. me out, by the way, when the, the monkey was in the little uh, the kabuki mask oh, and yeah. the whole thing. That, 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 that was, that was a bit freaky. Deeply disturbing as you go Okay, along. there's a dog restaurant where people take their, their pooches for the dogs eat dinner, the humans don't. But uh, And we'll see that in one of the episodes. But there was one, uh, there it is right there. Tell us about this one first okay. before we talk about the cat. This is in Washington State, and this woman, who's a very eccentric woman, we met, met many 
eccentric people along the way. Uh, she has a restaurant, it's strictly for dogs. And you, these owners bring their dogs in. As you can see, they're eating off fine china, uh, bone china. <laughs> Do the owners eat at no, the same don't. time? No, they don't. Just fact, the dog. On the subject of health regulations, they couldn't combine oh, the two. Of course, so it's right. just for the dogs. There's doggy desserts right there. And, uh, and this is the woman, and she was just so into it. It was pretty funny. And you'd meet like-minded people, like we're talking about the speed dating thing. If you're at a restaurant where your dogs are dining, chances are you're going to find something common with the person next Very to you. Very true. And, uh, and these people would bring their dogs. The dogs would be on dates. They'd dress them all up. It was, wow. <laughs> it was pretty weird. Guess, some weird where, are the, I mean, where are the cat people? Where are all the crazy cat okay, people? Is, I was going to tell you about this, because I was watching your little the cat Twitter montage. cat thing in yeah. the beginning. Um, or YouTube cat montage. There's a restaurant in Tokyo... Because Tokyo is a city that has such a huge population that the apartments are so tiny that there's really not much room for pets. Right. People can't have a dog or a cat. So cat lovers can go to this little cat cafe. And get cat time. And they can have a little, you know, a little bite of something or other. And then there are 50 cats that they can play with. And they just, they pay by the hour. It's like going bowling or something. You pay by the or hour. Or getting a massage. And, <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's weird. <laughs> and uh, It's like cat prostitution, what you're describing, really. And these cats... Come and hang out with these cat lovers. And what then, was weirder, the weird restaurants or the people behind them? Well, there were a lot of restaurants where there were very eccentric owners. Some of them were like uh, the Ninja restaurant in New York City. was That's like a big corporation who owns it. Yeah. And there are these very eccentric little restaurants. One that I love so much, also in Tokyo. We did 15 restaurants in Tokyo because it's full of crazy people. This little old like 75-year-old Japanese man who was an avid train collector had the whole restaurant was full of this whole like old train collection and you'd order your your curry it was Japanese curry and he'd put it on a train and it would go around the <laughs> parameter of the restaurant and come right to your table and stop at your table and you'd take your curry you off. mean like your right order and everything yes like yes yes and then he was always in a conductor's hat and doing this like Japanese conductor thing and another crazy woman wow. in England who had this hat collection kinetic hats uh, coincidentally, a train would run around one of the hats. Another one was a fishbowl with fish swimming inside it, and she'd sing you these songs. It, wow, I, you know, I'm going to get out more. Yeah, I mean, there has to be moments where you look around and you're just like, am I actually high right now? Like, well, what, uh, what has happened uh, around One here? specific moment like that was a pop-up nudist restaurant in New York City where all of the diners were naked. A pop-up nudist restaurant, no so they don't intended. announce it. It's just... No pun intended. <laughs> right. yes. Uh, um, yes, it's like once a month this club gets together. And, Is that legal? Well, you think well, of all the naked Probably things that not. happen in New York City. I mean, right. yeah, it's, it's New city. York City, I guess. Uh, yeah, uh, next time we'll talk about a restaurant called Eat In or Take Out, but that's a whole <laughs> other story. I'm serious. <laughs> Are we still talking about restaurants? <laughs> okay, That's so the nudist pop-up restaurant, so they just, like, do they have a little mailing list and, and it goes they, out to Yeah, people? there's some kind of word of mouth thing that happens and, and all these people come, they just, they arrive, they peel off their clothes and they hang out like... I mean, I'm, cool with, I'm cool with nudity. I just don't understand. I don't want to eat nude next to people I don't know. Well, and I, I don't even mind that. I just, I find it interesting that that's what some people want to do. Like, they're so... It's a wacky world. Yeah, out there. it really is. is. But one of the diners said something that was really funny. They said, you know how at the end of a meal you sometimes have to sneak when no one's looking and loosen your belt loop up? I guess yeah, you, you don't. don't do that. that. You don't Did you gear down? Well, you know, in the beginning, I was, I thought it was really weird to be surrounded by all these naked people. But by the end... It felt really odd to be the only person who wasn't naked. You and feel so like I, a pervert. I had no intention of doing it, but I took all my clothes off. Oh Went boy. in Rome, and you can find out uh, more about the world's weirdest oh. restaurant. Sorry. Pop-up TV <laughs> nude talk show. Let's do this thing. Let's go. You first. Uh, no. Bob and I will go a little slower. Uh, Wednesdays, uh, April 4th, it premieres 9 o'clock uh, on the Food Network Canada. Yes, Make sure don't you go to watch website. those Housewives of Vancouver at 9 o'clock on Wednesday. Yeah, are you challenging them? Because well, well, it's, it's a hair and battle. Restaurant. You know it. And I'm ready for an arm wrestle if you want to bring them out again. All right, we'll bring them out. Versus, oh no, sorry. Weirdest Housewives? <laughs> Hello, sorry. Dr. Freud? World's Weirdest Housewives. Sorry. <laughs> you guys could do a mashup. It's a mashup show. Coming We're up take next. A break.